Okay, I'm going to see if I can put together a little video of how to build this trade space model that I developed last week. I got some help from Nomagic. There's an actual trade space uh, tutorial out there. It's kind of hard to find. But when I found it, I was, it was still overwhelming to go through it. So I thought I'd do a little more simple trade space study. So this is going to be just a study of a beam. You know, for instance, the beam could be square. That's the type here. It can be copper, steel, aluminum. We have a square cross section, a round cross section, or a hollow round cross section. And really, very simply, the structure is a beam block with all these parameters or values in it. So um, I got the, the, the distance to the half fiber, which is where the, you know, the stress is calculated at, the inner diameter, uh, the inertia, uh, volume, load, stress, all that kind of stuff. So let's see if we can start here. The way I did this was I started off with an analysis block up in the analysis block or area and I said hey let's take a look at the beam in the analysis block there it is right so in the analysis um, block you have to um, set up a beam that you're going to use for the trade study so we're going to add another block here we're going to call it block under analysis right <clears throat> And that's going to inherit all the beams um, information. So we also need to create these MOEs. So the MOEs of creating these moment or measurements of effectiveness are a little confusing. Uh, so really, in you create a folder under the structure, or it can be under analysis too. But I just have it under structure. I'll create a block in there, right? And then in that block, I'm going to call it uh, measure measures effective effectiveness I can't spell and in order to get the measures of effectiveness that you use in this model into the block or as part of the block you have to add a diagram which is a parametric diagram and that shows up and then you'll see the MOE blocks show up here so you add one we're gonna call this um, you know uh, geez maximum beam mass we'll add maximum beam deflection and then we'll add uh, maximum stress margin easy enough so now they're here you can see them when we go back to the analysis we can add this measure of effectiveness now and it shows up with these MOEs in here again we tie the uh, block under analysis to associate it with these measures of effectiveness and now we inherit all this stuff into this block so it, and i actually added some baseline models here you know numbers here in this beam block we'll use those but the next part which is the really cool part is the adding the constraints so this, i just did not understand this before i was lucky when i found this tutorial but what you can do is here's a here's a matlab model i made to support this this model has you know, the same inputs and outputs, you know, you can see I, cost, margin, mass, deflection. Inputs here are type of um, beam, length of beam, uh, how di what the diameter or the cross-sectional width of the beam, all that kind of stuff. And then some equations down here, nothing too difficult, just very simple stuff. I think there's some errors, but, but this is just a demo, no big deal. Anyway, you make this function up here. And I'll, I'll save all this stuff up in our uh, shared up in our GitHub account so we can all look at this. But save, save this function in MATLAB or build it in, in MATLAB. And then you can actually just drag and drop it onto the... It's crazy. Watch this. Just drag and drop it right onto the table, onto the sheet. And it'll show up. So we want to get rid of these um, ports. Size it. And there it is. Looks great. I'm also going to add the, um, I made a very simple objective function too. Nothing to it. This is dumb. Just add mass plus minus cost plus margin, whatever. You know, we'll have to, you'll make a special objective function when you do your real models. But let me drag it on there too. It's right here. And we'll get rid of these again. All right, so here's where the magic comes in. So now let me save this. Um, in order to get these to actually work, you have to go back up into your analysis model, into the beam study, and go under, go to the beam under analysis and in, 
insert a parametric diagram. There it is, but don't include any of this stuff. Just clear it all out, hit OK. Um, uh, and then what you'll do is you'll add these. Uh, uh -oh, where did they go? Oh, th there it is, beam study. Those are my constraints. So you add these constraints to this parametric diagram as part of the block under analysis up in the analysis folder. It'll link it all up for you. So if you just drag this beam study here, It'll know everything's you can get the cut off here. It's already kind of pre, I, I did a good job naming on this side versus this side. So they all match up done and it'll build you a little uh, setup here. Same thing with the objective function, just drag and drop it. It knows. And then of course the objective function, I, I did not name that correctly there. So I tie it over here with the, uh, oh, I made a mistake. So let's go back. I have to, in order to make this work, the beam under analysis has to have a, oh, it is there. So I did put the objective function there. Huh. All right, let's go back and get, check that out. Uh, block on there and then we let's delete that and do it again. Oh, oh, F, it found it that time. That was weird. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it didn't find it the first time, but it, it did find it. I don't know why it did not find it the first time. Maybe I just didn't see it. All right, so there it is. It's mapping it, sets it all in there. They all hook up. It's good. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that looks good. So um, now I think you can run this. If you just simulate this, it will go get the MATLAB model and fills everything in. You see it? Nice, right? It tells you what your lengths are, your mass, I mean, tells you what your margin is. It's a calculate, you know, we're negative 0.443, so this is going to fail, right? Anyway, that's neat. It, it just does it for you quickly and easily. It's, that's great. And you can edit things on the fly here. So if you want to change the material to, let's say, let's just change the length from, uh, or the load from 0.01 to 10. You should see the margin go through the, yeah, the margin goes really bad, right? Minus one. Uh, 0.01. I don't know what I'm using here. 0.001. The margin should increase. The margin is finally positive. So 0.01. Now, the next trick is to go ahead and tie this these the results of this analysis back to the requirements. That's where this gets fun. That's where it becomes really powerful. So we have a. I went ahead and made a set of requirements here. Real simple. You know, the the stress margin has to be greater than zero. The beam deflection has to be less than 0.01 meters and it has a weight less than 1.5 kilograms. So I go back to the analysis <coughs> and on this, uh, sorry, excuse me, on this block, I will drag the, um, I will drag this beam under, block under analysis again here. And what you do to, to show these MOEs in this block, because you're going to tie that information to the MOEs. Um, is you go to symbol properties and you turn on where is it show inherited boom okay so now you see all this stuff in here yeah so um well actually you're going to tie these to these values but we'll get to that so you pull your margin or you pull your uh your uh, requirements in we we create uh we create um, constraints for these requirements. That's max mean deflection, and that's max mass. All right. So we know that these this uh, margin here. Let's put him down at the bottom so they match up. Margin is going to satisfy stress margin. Mass is going to satisfy mass, and deflection is going to satisfy the deflection requirements. And now we have to add our constraints. And so we do that by adding a constraint block. One, two, three. And this one is going to refine that. This is refining this, and this is refining this. Oh. Ah. All right, so this constraint here is max de deflection constraint deflection must be less than or equal to 0.01. Um, and you got to add an actual 
parameter to that too. So deflection. Got it. This is the max uh, mass constraint. A I N T. Sorry, I cannot spell. And then we're going to say mass is less than or equal to 1.5 kilograms, right? Let me make sure this is real. I'm not using any units here. So add a value constraint or add a parameter. It's mass uh, real. All right. And then we have a constraint here, uh, which is uh, margin min margin constraint. God, I can't spell. It's fine. Sorry, guys. It must be greater than or equal to zero. All right. And we'll add a parameter here called margin. And real. Okay. So there's that. Um, I think if I solve this again, you'll see those show up. I think so. So you the objective functions there. There's that one. I got two objective functions. I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, you don't see it yet because you have to go add the constraint setup. So let's go do that real quick. Under the beam, under analysis, you have to add another diagram. So uh, and this, you know, beam or block under, it should say beam under analysis. Let me change it here in a second. But you'll add another parametric diagram. Turn all this off. Let me change the name. This is going to be constraints, right? And on here, we're going to pull these constraints in. So max deflection constraint equal deflection. That's right. Uh, max mass constraint. Yep, that's right. And then the max, the min margin constraint should say, should know margin does. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I think that's right. Let me change this real quick to be beam. All right, I hope this is working. So now I should be able to take a, go back to it in analysis, and we should be able to uh, analyze this, and it should show negatives. There they are. Awesome. So we pass mass, we fail margin, we fail deflection. Excellent. This is working great. So now what we want to do to finish this up is you want to put together an instance table so that you can uh, monitor a bunch of instances. So we'll add a our little our our um, our instance table. There it is. In the instance table, as the classifier, you add the beam under analysis, which is right here. It should show up with all those cool settings, and then you add trait space as your scope, which is where it'll drop the instances into. So we also want to show in our columns here. So we have max beam mass, stress margins, types, length. Let's add a few more. Let's add stress so we can see the actual stress calculation, mass calculation, and margin calculation. And I want to add the objective function. It's not showing up here correctly. Let's see if I can get that here. Analysis objective function. I think that's right. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't know if I have two or what here, but let's just pick both of them. Well, one of them will actually probably show up. Yeah. So if we add a new beam, it's already kind of pre-filled in. It should be able to run. And then you'll see uh, past solved it. It's not getting my objective function. Shit. Let me stop it and fix it real quick. I'm back. I figured out what I did wrong here, which is I forgot to add this objective function, which is the output for the calculation as a value to the beam under analysis block. So I added this here and it shows up over here now. And then when I went back to the beam analysis, I you know I redrug it back in and it built it built it correctly. Or built it correctly. So I've got to go back in one more time and add my I did delete this when we were gone. I had to add another parametric diagram. Uh, clear this, yep, and then add these um, it's gonna be constraints. 
and we're going to add the max deflection constraint, which is correct deflection, uh, max mass constraint, which is mass, yep, and max minimum margin allowable, which is margin. So now when I go back to my table, I should see, oh, they're not there yet, so let's add them. Um, turn these off. We're going to select the cons. We're going to add our min, our constraints to the table. Here they are. They show up there. So now when I run, I've got two of them running here with different. They're both. Let's just change this to point zero zero point zero one. Yeah, something small. Um, point one. And then when I update, let me just update everything. You'll see that my pass fails come in here. Yeah, so pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. And, of course, when you change these, they'll, they'll update accordingly. So the deflection on this one fails, which because it's, um, I'm not showing the deflection right now. Let's take a look at it real quick. Deflection right here is uh, control A, evaluate. We got, you know, this is, this is all baloney. These numbers are baloney, but uh, it's like a half a meter, which is not real. Um, but if I change the diameter of it to 0.1, it should go up, of course. And when I run these again, you know, I'll get the deflection passing. And it's only deflecting 0 0.002 meters. So it's pretty small. Anyway, that's it. That's all you had to do. Um, I would recommend that we practice this a couple times because I'd like to... Um, I, fi I figured out how to make MATLAB control SDK last week. So now I can run scenario you know, based models and then get uh, access times back or whatever else we need, you know, cost of the flight, fuel used, all kinds of good stuff, uh, targets hit, and then we can build a trade study off all of that. And this becomes, I think you can see, this is becoming really powerful to do this with. So anyway, um, I'm starting to get it. Uh, Y'all have a good rest of the day. I'll talk to you this week. Later.